I'll give you my opinion. That's absolutely fine. We're here to talk about the news. So Jim Radcliffe, Matt, dropped an absolute banger yesterday and a lot of people missed it because it was before the game. I hate it. I don't know about you, but I absolutely hate it. When you get good quotes from a manager or a player or something a couple of hours before a match because it gets completely lost because the match takes over. So Sir Jim Radcliffe ran the London Marathon yesterday and afterwards he was interviewed by Gabby Logan and this is what he said about the Manchester United situation. He said one of the, and this is a huge hint, like this is a huge hint about what we're about to do at Manchester United over the next few months and the dangers of making a Glazer decision because what the Glazers did twice is they sacked Mourinho and didn't have a replacement that was good enough ready. And we wasted three years with Oli. And then they sacked Oli and they didn't have a replacement ready. And they went with Rangnick and they, they wasted six months there. So sacking a manager just because there's a bit of hyper out there. We've got to sack him. Sack him now and all that, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes. This is what Sir Jim Radcliffe had to say. One of the problems in football is you get these new guys to come into the team. He's talking about Barada and Ashworth, who are really capable people, but they're all on gardening leave. And so it takes you six months to a year or even 18 months before they can join. And it's a real issue. Now, people might say, well, that's not a hint. There's another quote coming. But my point, the point he's making here is that the CEO and the director of football are going to make the decisions that rebuild this football club. Rightly or wrongly, whether they're good decisions or bad decisions, they're the people who are going to do it. They're not here. They're not here. So if we make big decisions without them being here, then why are we any different from the Glazers when they sacked Mourinho and bought Ollie in? Like, we've got to trust this Ineos project. It's the only project we've got. But Ineos also have to trust their project. Sir David Brailsford and Sir Jim Radcliffe cannot be sacking managers. They are not football people. They have bought people in who are football people and they can't do it from their garden. They can't. They can't do it from their TV screen. They've got to be in the club understanding. Because if they were to sack Ten Hag and then come into the club and go, oh my fucking God, look at what was being built and it's clearly the players. We've got rid of the wrong person. They can't do that. So that, that to me is about patience, which a lot of people don't have. The second thing is, and here we go, direct quote from Sir Jim Radcliffe. And I think this is the biggest hint that they will stick with Ten Hag. And I, I think it's the right thing to do. I know people think well, I'm in the minority, but I don't care. At least I'm consistent. I, I respect your opinion and I, I, I do. And we can talk about that. But I agree with this. I think this is the best quote Sir Jim Radcliffe has ever said. The fans are impatient. We are. We are impatient. I get impatient during games. You get impatient. Some of you are still impatient. And I have some sympathy with that. But it's a journey. Whether they like it or not, they have to be a bit patient. It's not a light switch. You can't just turn it around like that. And I think that is something that we don't want to hear this morning. No, we don't want to hear it. I completely agree with that. Welcome to the Members Club, Elbod. You're, a, you're an absolute legend. We don't want to hear that this morning. I accept that. But the, tell me any of that's wrong. We don't have a director of football. We don't have a CEO. We don't know when they're going to start. I think Barada comes in in June. Um, we're... There is no light switch anymore. You know, I was on Talk Sport this morning and the pile on to sack the manager was incredible. And I'll, I'll, I'll give my opinion if you want it in a moment. But what I do not understand, and I'll repeat it on here, is the memory loss is unbelievable. I, I, I don't understand the... I understand the impatience. I understand the frustration. But we were talking before yesterday. We were talking about this two weeks ago. And many of you agreed when we discussed it and said the similarities between now and Ranić two years ago are unbelievable. And yet most Man United fans think that Ralph Ranić was the guy. You know, he spoke about open heart surgery. He spoke publicly about the problems and he got thrown under the bus by the players and by the club. And two years ago, when he was talking about open heart surgery and the problems at Man United... And you've got Luckhurst and Co, you know, ridiculing him. And you've got a media, you know, basically slaughtering him and a club stabbing him in the back and the players downing tools for him. Ranić was the only one talking sense. And two years ago, Ranić was dealing with exactly what's going on now. Inexplicable performances from international well-paid players like Name names if you want, but look at that team yesterday. 
international players on hundreds of thousands a week inexplicably playing like their National League players being outplayed by Coventry. Same thing happened to Rangnick two years ago. He's picking international players and they're just shite. Also, injuries. Weird injuries happening all the time. Little li people limping off, muscle injuries. Same thing happened to Rangnick two years ago. And, you, you know, you, you read an article and you read a tweet and you think, Did, they, are these people chuff monsters or what? Like, they, they can't be. They're, they're in their 20s. They're in their 30s. They're in their 40s. They can't have been up their mum's chuff two years ago. But they were certainly somewhere. Where, 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 where were you two years ago? Do you just are you like goldfish? Do you just erase your memory and then live the same thing again? It's like bloody Groundhog Day with some of our support. It's like they haven't lived the last couple of months of Mourinho or the last couple of months of Oli or the last couple of months of Rangnick, and then we're doing it again. And they're all going, manager, change the manager. It's the and you know what you know what the manager thing is. Whether it's right or wrong, you know what the manager thing is. It's impatient and it's the easy way out. Listen to what Sir Jim Radcliffe is saying there and tell me you're not taking the easy way out that's been the well-trodden path. Like, the easiest thing to do in life is blame one person for everything, change it and think everything will be okay. If you work in an organisation where it's fundamentally losing money and it's on its knees, you sack one person... It's the easiest thing to do. The hardest thing to do is actually solve the problems. And football clubs do it all the time. And we've done it for 10 years. Blame one person, change that one person. It's cheap, it's easy, and it's a statement. And we've been on this hamster wheel for years. But this is so similar to what was going on with Rangnick two years ago. I can't speak. It's, it's so, so similar. And I was talking to a lot of you two years ago. You're still here, but you're still throwing it all on a manager exclusively. I, I don't get that. I'm more than happy to have the conversation about the manager, but exclusively blaming him. Roy Keane said last night, and I don't always... Agree, I, love, I love Roy Keane as a player. More news. Roy Keane said last night that when it comes to the players for Manchester United, that I, I don't see character. I'm getting to the stage where I dis, almost dislike these players. Um, you're 3-0 up. I'm waiting for leadership. And they're down tools. Tell me anything that's wrong there from the best Premier League captain I've ever seen and the best Manchester United captain I've ever seen because I was too young for Robson. I don't see character in that team. He was speaking after Harry Maguire said that we showed character to win the game. He says, I don't see character and I'm getting to the stage where I dislike these players because I'm waiting for leadership at 3-0 up and I, we don't get it. He's not talking about the manager there. He's talking about the players. The same players that... Let Oli down. The same players that let Mourinho down. The same players that let Ranjik down. The same players that are le letting Ten Hag down. And can I just say it? They don't down tools for the manager. They down tools for you. When are you going to realise that a manager is just a paid incumbent of a job? You are not paid to support this football club. You do it for love. You give your time up for passion. These players are not playing for you. And I, I, I will now put up my tweet, which will lead into my opinion here. And this is my opinion, right? The longer I get away from that result yesterday, the more I know that when you're 3-0 up against Coventry and you make a couple of substitutions with half an hour to go and you've got 11 players on that pitch earning a combined £2 million a week, the more I start to understand this is not exclusively on the manager. Now, I was angry yesterday. You were angry yesterday. It was embarrassing. It was frustrating. But after a night's sleep, the more I move away from it, the more relieved I am that we won. And the more I realise that the real blame here is on those players. It is. It always has been. It always will be. The players sacked Mourinho. The players sacked Oli. The players did Ranić, And they're now doing it again. Because what happens is, if you blame one person, they blame one person as well. News, news flash, those players blame the manager, like the same way they blame Mourinho. They are blame shifters. And they will be thinking, new manager comes in, I'll try really hard again, I'll get away with it, and then I'll fall out with that manager and I'll stop doing that, and I'll survive again and again and again and again. But I genuinely do not understand how I'm reading comments and I'm reading 
you know, stuff on social media. I'm seeing clips and people are going, if this club has got anything about it, they'd sack the manager today. If this club is still a real football club, the manager will be gone today. And I'm like, hold on a minute. You're meant to support Manchester United. What? Where's your brain cells gone? Of course, there's a conversation to be had about the manager, but you're, 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 you're solely blaming him for what happened yesterday and so much so that you want to sack him. Well, hold on a minute then. Let me give an alternative. Two FA Cup finals in a row. We didn't just beat Coventry to get to the final, by the way. Two FA Cup finals in a row. We beat Liverpool along the way, legitimately, without penalties. So let's not pretend we've scammed our way to the final. Two FA Cup finals in a row in his first two years. A Carabao Cup in his first two years. The best win ratio of any Manchester United in history. So my argument is, no, they shouldn't be sacking him this morning. They should be saying, if you've done that in two years with this shit, how do we make you do better with better players? He's, he's basically swimming in the sewer and somehow, look or not, producing things. If I was his CEO, if I was his boss, I'd be saying, we're shit. We're really shit. I, I accept that. We're really, really shit. We are absolute shit. There's no doubt about that. We are absolutely rubbish. And yet we're, we've got to two FA Cup finals, we've won a Carabao Cup and he's got the best win ratio in our history. If we're shit and he's doing that, what if we get start playing well? And nobody wants to have that conversation because let's sack another manager. Let's be impatient. Let's blame. Let's hang somebody out to dry. And I know it's a difficult conversation to have, to be pragmatic and to actually think it through. But people call me toxic because I'm backing the manager. I'm not backing the manager. I'm, I'm not backing these players. I'm supporting the football club. And I don't want to sack another manager and let this lot off. I want to try something new. And if that means keeping the manager for this summer, then I'm all for it. This is not... Oh, Bridge, that's the end of the clip. I'm sure you enjoyed it. In fact, I bet that's the best clip you've ever watched. So there's no reason not to subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon so you never miss a clip again. In fact, smash a like on the video because we all know only legends like videos and you are all legends. So please smash a like on the video and uh, we will see you again on the next one. Thank you very much for watching as always.